This morning we're going to run through the donning and doffing of protective clothing uh, similar to what you would use in an incident uh, for avian flu. What we have here in the kit is a, a one-piece coverall, goggles, two pairs of gloves, a, re a respirator and a, a pair of footwear or rubber boots. The main thing that we have to make sure of when before we even start supplying the suit is that um, it is the right size. So Chapman we checked on his height and chest measurement and this suit would now fit his size. So size is very important. You wouldn't give somebody one size of footwear to supply to all your people. The same with the coverall. It should be coveralls to fit the right size of the person. So if you can take it out of the bag, please. Now, as you take the bag out, the uh, suit out the bag, depending on where you are, you'll be looking to try and sit down. Now, if you're in a uh, unsafe environment, you can easily sit down in a chair, but most of you guys are out in the field and you need to find somewhere else to sit safely. If you have a vehicle, if you have um, a wall, a crash barrier, uh, the tailgate of the vehicle, anything that uh, you can sit and put the posterior on to take the weight off. Once you are sitting down, remove your footwear. This allows for ease of dressing, but more importantly, no contamination from the sole of the footwear can be transferred to the inside of the garment. So sitting down is very important to be safe uh, at the time of dressing. As you can see, these garments have socks uh, attached to the suit. This will protect in the ankle area as well. It means that you don't have to worry about the coverall riding up when you're walking about because you have full protection into the foot area as well. And what Chapman's now doing, taking the loose fabric from the garment, putting his foot into the boot, and the, boot ha uh, the suit has um, an additional leg cover which pulls over the outside of the boot. It means that any dust or any liquid that would happen to hit the front of the garment would run straight to the floor. Now if you don't have a safe area to change and you don't have a, a clean environment, the plastic bag that the garment came in could be used as a ground sheet to let you change at the time. Okay. So you would dress to this level uh, without going any further, that's fine there, Chapman. And what you would now do is put on your goggles and your respirator because you want them inside the hood rather than outside. Again, this gives you better protection and it means there's less chance of contamination on straps, etc. when you finish. Uh, another thing that has to be taken into consideration is facial hair, beards. Uh, gentlemen, if you have facial hair, none of these masks will fit properly because the facial hair breaks the seal on the mask, whether it be this full face mask or whether it be one of the disposables, as soon as you start to try and wear this with facial hair, even light stubble, it can break the seal and depending on the environment, it could be hazardous to your health. Most respirators will have two straps. Uh, you feed it to the bottom of the chin first, feed onto the nose, bottom strap right over onto the bottom of the neck and then this top strap over the top of the neck here. If required, you can adjust the straps at the side to make it fit properly. And then there's an aluminium uh, nose piece which you uh, pinch to fit to the face. And uh, what you would then do is put two hands over the mask and give it a blow just to make sure that the mask is fitting properly. And then your goggles. Again, the goggles have straps which again you want inside the coverall. That's fine. What you're looking for is a good seal between mask and respirator. You do not want any misting up of the mask or any exhaled air going into the goggle. So we would do this. The next thing is we would always recommend a double uh, glove system. So the first pair is a thin medical uh, latex or nitrile glove. You'll see on the suit it has a thumb loop. And what the thumb loop does is if you stretch your arm for me, Chapman, when you stretch, this stops the suit leave arm sliding up the arm. If you would repeat then on the other hand, uh, second glove. And again, make sure the thumb loop is in place. Now, 
Before we go any further, you would now dress the hood and suit, putting the hood over the head first. And you want it to come down and to fit over the edge of the goggle. If you pull the zip up now on the garment, I'll do this for you. The zip on the suit locks and it means it will not slide back down. So when you, if you lift your chin up for me, please. That seals, locks, and we then have a, a fit into the face here. Just make sure this fits all the way around. Can you just turn towards me? Fine. The suit is also has an adhesive strip. This covers the storm flap of the garment uh, to cover the zip and make sure there's no ingress here. Make sure that you feed all the way down and seal the garment here. Secondly, there is a storm flap over the uh, throat and bottom of the respirator. Again, this comes round sealing and it means if you were to lift your head up, this area here would be protected without breaking any seals. We have a second pair of gloves just to uh, finalise the ensemble. Now, before he does that, can we just, um, what you would now do is go down one knee and raise the hand above your head and stretch to make sure that the suit actually does what you want it to do because you're going to move about in the garment and you don't want the garment to rip or tear at the time of uh, working in the environment. And this way it gives a stretch to the whole garment from the crutch to the, under the arms. And these are the two critical areas of the garment, underarm and crutch area. And now you're ready to go and get your equipment and uh, do what you have to do. Once you've come back from uh, your environment of uh, probable hazard, hazard, you then have to undress. Uh, undressing is actually more important than even dressing because you now have a potential to have contamination either on the suit or on the gloves or on your respirator. And you now have a microclimate of the environment that you are uh, um, photographing or being uh, inside. And you have to make sure that you take the garment off uh, safely so that you don't contaminate yourself now. So what we're looking at is taking this garment off and peeling it off like a banana so that we actually turn it inside out and it means that all the clean inside then becomes the outside and uh, the contamination is contained within the suit. So the first thing you would do is take the throat flap away and that's the first part and then you would also now take from here the storm flap If you have a, a buddy system where there's two of you, the person who's helping to undress should have at least a pair of gloves and another coverall on. Doesn't need all the other stuff, but certainly would need some level of protection. If you pull this hard now this way and put your finger under the zip, you'll just come up to the top. Right up. Make sure. Just now, you know, what you can now do is take the zip and pull it all the way. Don't put your hand inside because what you're potentially doing is putting contamination inside the garment. So you want to stay on the outside at all times until you get to here. Okay, now for undressing, uh, you do, again don't want to be able to touch inside any of the garment. The first thing you have to do is take the hood off. We didn't explain that, so what, no, before you do that, what you do is take the two thumbs. Can I just show you? Show me, look at this camera, okay. please. What you do is you would take the two thumbs pull the fabric away from the head and then roll the hood away. So when you turn around, the hood has been turned inside out and any contaminated area on the side has been turned away from the head and you have a clean piece of material against the back of the neck. Okay, so that would take it to here. The next thing is to take your glove and suit off. And this is an easier way by taking the this glove away. That's a contaminated glove, drop it and taking your hand back and then grabbing the sleeve here. And what you do is if you pull that down, what it does, if you turn around, please, this way, now, okay, there you go. What you're now doing is you pull that sleeve, you're now taking that arm away, bring that hand out, 
you have a clean hand uh, which has not been contaminated ready to help you on this side. This now goes inside this hand, inside, peel over. Now you stop there. If you can then take the hand with the glove, grab the glove in there, pull it and that takes the glove away. So that contaminated glove is there. You've now got clean hands. Start to roll it down to about there and then sit down. You know, we keep on continuing with the suit down to the boots. Yeah, to roll the suit further down. Stand on side, inside the suit because that keeps your feet clean. Again, stand there. You have your other shoes which are here at the side. Now put them on. What you've now done is any dust or any uh, liquid that could have been on the surface of the suit, you've contained it within rolling the suit outside in, but you've also protected yourself with the respirator and the goggles because most of the hazard that you would be in, in avian flu environments would be a respiratory problem rather than a skin. So what we've done is we've kept the protection all the way through. You can now step slightly aside here. You now have clean hands, clean straps. You don't touch the mask and you don't touch the goggle. You would take it from the strap off. Right, that's that. Put that down into that. And then the same with the respirator. One, two. Again, don't shake it about because, again, any loose contamination from there. And eventually, now, before you take these off, you've got now got contaminated stuff here. In the kit that's supplied, it comes with a yellow disposal bag, a biohazard bag, and what you would do is you'd put all the things that you're going to dispose of into that bag ready for uh, disposal. It would also mean that there's no chance of contamination uh, being uh, disturbed when you take it away with you. You are now ready to remove your inner gloves which should also be placed in the bag. The biohazard bag should now be sealed and taken to the appropriate place for incineration or landfill.